You know, I'll tell you this, that season five was super intense. Produce, obviously, you know, with everything we play at the end and uh, being really instrumental and kind of uh, setting up juice. Thanks, Gordon. Um, and everybody reaches a breaking point. And, um, and I think that, you know, he just wants acceptance somewhere and something. And, you know, I think the question is now, Jax is running the club. How does that work out? How does Juice fit into that plan and uh, that situation? It's a very different club right now. And I think we get to really see that deal with, with, with Jax. You know, is he John Teller? Is he Clay? How does he, how does it, everybody wants the, you know, heavy is the, you know, he wants to wear the crown. What comes with that? You know, so, and, and how do we all fit into that? How do we all either respect that? How does it work for us? And I think that for me, without saying anything, because I'm sure Kirk can choke me out at any time here, is, uh, is you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Every single script reads like a finale. Everything is like, you literally turn that last page, you're like, what is happening? How is this all happening in one script? And we have 13 of these. Um, and with me, I've been really lucky, really, really, really lucky as this character to kind of start as the funny guy and then to go to this sad, you know, crying clown to kind of go to what's going to happen to him, this self-deprecating, I want to kill myself type deal, to now playing an entirely different side. We just really see a whole different side of Juice this year. And I'm really excited for everybody to see it. Of all the characters, he seems to be the one that's constantly living in fear. I mean, he hides it really well. Yeah. But how is that to actually try to wear that mask of fear yet under the smile all the time? No, the, cr the clown that's crying on the inside. Uh, I think, you know, um, I, I think that's just, it, it's it's an extremely hard thing to play in that world. Not, not as an actor, I think for, for what I'm saying is as, you know, in that world, in that violent world that's been created with Sons of Anarchy, it's like to maintain and navigate in that world uh, as that guy. So that's why I think, like I said, there is that breaking point where everybody has to, how long can you go on like that without rebelling or kind of, you know, losing it. And, uh, and uh, that's kind of uh, what I'm excited for this year. Kurt's really, really, really good at knowing exactly what emotion comes from every single thing. There's always a plan. And that's what I love. Nothing goes unresolved. Nothing gets left hanging. And, uh, you know, a lot of things have changed since OB died. You know, you know everything's everything. changed. For everything. For everybody. For the whole club. For the whole show. It was kind of, you know, for us, I was saying before, it was, it was one of those things where when that happened, we went, it was like a reality check. As an actor and as a character. As a character, it was, this is a pretty violent world we're in. And as an actor, it was, we're not going to run forever, are we? You know, people do start, this isn't, you know, all my children. We're not going to, and even that got canceled. I mean, you know, even things happen, you know? So, um, it's interesting. I'm, 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 I'm pretty excited. And uh, it, it's like every time we get a script, that's like Christmas. We, we get excited. Masking fear, what excitement. We're like, <laughs> but yeah. So can you tease next season at all, what we're going to see? I new? wish I could. I just think that it's, you know, without saying much, I mean, it, it's, it's funny. It's going to be here soon enough. I think the first, I think it really just, it's, like I said, it's kind of like, it's, it's so intense. It's so intense. And at the same time, there's so much stuff being resolved, and so much stuff being brought up, and it's a very different world. You know, we got a lot of characters that are kind of been circling with Nero and the sheriff and Eli and you know all these different things, and, and you know, and and seeing everybody's new roles in a way. Things have changed. It's not the old days with Opie Piney, you know, play at the head of the table and everybody around. It's, you know, and half sack and all. It's all changed. And watching it change every year is is the fun part. 
because it's always new, it's always fresh. And I think right off the bat, you start to see that. As, as Juice sees those changes happening, who, who does he find himself most aligned with? Because he's kind of floated around. That's what you start to see. So, does he start to like pick a definite side? I think there's a... He starts making decisions. That's that's the best I can say. There's decisions being made that because he can't he can't float any longer. He can't wallow any longer. You know, it's there's one point or another where survival kind of kicks in. So. Would he be ready to wear this um, the crown of the throne if that became the situation? <laughs> Unstable at best. No, absolutely not. He can barely get up in the morning. He ain't gonna be able to run a club. Um, no, I, I just think that you know everybody at a it's different roles, different things, different. Uh, there's soldiers and there's leaders in this room. Juice is definitely a soldier in every way. Yeah, but if he's the last man standing, so... Ma imagine. <laughs> It'd be interesting. He could pick up the mantle. A business manager would be happy. We'll see what happens. <laughs> well, what do you think the last episode should be? Abel should be putting on the cut and walking away. No, I don't know. You know, I, we think about that, you know, uh, obviously, there's only one person that knows that around this room. I mean, I'm sure that would that, that's a really interesting question. I don't know. Finales are, series finales are the hardest thing in the world, I think. And I've always thought, you know, I'm a huge fan of The Shield, and The Shield is my favorite series finale ever. And I've seen a few of them now. I thought The Sopranos was pretty good, but not like The Shield. And if you're a fan of The Shield, you know, you just see, they leave it so ambiguous with Big Mackey. Like, where did he go? What did he do? And knowing that he was a part of that makes me feel really comfortable with the way this is going to go. You know, because every season finale has been, every uh, season finale has been a... Uh, pretty amazing and you know recently I, I do a lot of stuff with the military and uh, you know was, and, uh, the, the Navy SEALs are downrange in Afghanistan and they got all these gifts from like Nike and Apple and all that and the one gift they wanted was from Sons and I'm friends with a lot of the guys and the one gift they really wanted I said what's your favorite thing and they said the season three finale would stall and uh, you know, and Jimmy O and all that. So we uh, sent them the script from season three, signed by everybody, and they literally have read it like five times. And I always think that that was like, to me, that was like one of the greatest finales we've ever had. And uh, so it just shows that I'm, I'm really comfortable with however the series ends. Do you find though that since the death of Opie and Ryan leaving the show, that now that you have you know limited time left, that you're a little more nervous when you read each script to see who might leave next? You know, I think that it's it's part of this world. It's kind of what is created. I mean, I don't I don't, get, I, I don't I don't necessarily get nervous about it. As long as you see me with a mohawk, I'm all right. <laughs> you see me walk in here with a giant afro, I'm in trouble. All right. <laughs> um, no, I mean, or I'm undercover somewhere in Whitpro and in Sam like You know, I. I uh, I don't think like that. I think in the, in, the, in the fact of the character and what he does. And I've never trusted a writer like this. So whatever he does is cool with me. Um, and I just say that not because, you know, uh, our friendship, but just because between the shield and this, I, I'm cool. We're in good hands. <laughs> happy so, man. <laughs> All right, you thank you very much. So even when you're in good hands, would you be making the same choices if you were writing your character? I could barely write my name. Um, I, I wish I could write. Would I be making the same choices? I think that I've been, again, I've been so lucky. I'm one of the few characters that literally has gone to play. One of the guys has been joking around and crying and suicidal and, you know, aggressive. So I've been really lucky.